Hey peeps, welcome to the replay. Welcome to the live prayer. Uh, today we're going to be here as long as the Lord wants us to. So that means it could be short, it could be long, but welcome to prayer tonight. Thank you all for joining me. We'll be praying live, so if you have... Welcome, welcome, welcome. If you have a prayer request, welcome to Live Prophetic Prayer. There is a question mark button right here where you can submit a prayer request. If you're not sure what you have prayer needs for, hang tight. It might come to you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Lord, I just commit today to you for whatever you want to do. The fresh word, the refreshing of your people, the encouragement of your people, the words of wisdom, the words of knowledge. Wow your people, God. Wow your people with your goodness and your loving kindness, with the fact that you know every detail about their life. And so everything that I speak today, let it be by the utterance of your Holy Spirit. God, I say no spirit but the Holy Spirit dwell in this place. Let your fire come down, Lord. Consume everything that does not look like you. More of you, Lord, less of me less of our problems, more magnifying of our Savior who has risen and defeated every battle known to man. And so God, we just thank you today. We dedicate tonight to you and all the requests. You already know before we pray what the needs are in our heart. And so Lord, I pray that as we lay them down at your feet, we can trust you. You are a trustworthy father. You are a victorious Savior. You have a track record of victory lord we don't have to worry that you can't do it your word says that nothing is impossible for you and so god we just thank you and we welcome you here to have your way this is your platform this is your agenda feel free to interrupt any and every way in which you would like to in jesus name amen amen hello friends welcome tonight it's on a different day but i thank you for joining me Oh, good. We have a prayer request. Thank you so much for that prayer request. I'll keep it in mind. I'm going to do a quick uh, Bible study before we go. Um, something that was on my heart earlier that I thought was so interesting. I was thinking about the disciples and how when Jesus sent out the disciples, he gave them very specific instructions. And a lot of times when you think, oh, God's going to send me out. A lot of times we think that God is sending us out with this grand set of instructions and grand set of resources, but we live in an upside down kingdom, right? And so when we serve God, he does things that are outside of what we would naturally think. So I'm going to take us to the book of Luke. We're going to read two chapters. Um, if you're not so fond of Bible reading, we're going to get fond of it today. So first one is Luke 10. And then we're going to go after that to Luke 22. So first, we're going to start in Luke 10 real quick. This is the chapter where Jesus sends out the 72. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. And he told them the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into the harvest field. Go, I'm sending you like lambs among wolves. Do not hear the instructions. Do not take a purse or a bag or sandals and do not greet anyone on the road. And when you enter a house, first say, peace to this house. And if a man of peace is there, your peace will rest on him. And if not, it will return to you. Stay in that house, eating and drinking whatever they give you, for the worker deserves his wages. Do not move around from house to house. When you enter a town and are welcomed, Eat what is set before you, heal the sick who are there, and tell them the kingdom of God is near. But when you enter a town and you are not welcomed, go into the streets and say, even the dust of your town that sticks to the feet we wipe off against you. Yet be sure of this, the kingdom of God is near. 
I tell you, it will be more bearable on the day of Sodom than for that town. So let me pause there for, for a moment. Really interestingly enough, hi friends, hi Abraham, hi Miguel, hi other new friends that I'm just meeting tonight. So the Lord is sending them out on a mission, but he's telling them very specifically, do not take a purse or a bag or sandals and do not greet anyone on the road. So we have in our mind that if God sends us to a place that he's going to give us this backpack suitcase full of all of this stuff, right? That would help us be so blessed. And so I remember first reading this verse and being like, Lord, that seems very counterintuitive. That seems almost not right to send off your people unprepared. And so I had to stop myself there, right? That is an orphan spirit talking. When you have this idea that your father is going to send you, you think he's really going to send you and you're not going to be prepared. You're not going to have what you need. And so in that moment, in me even asking that question, I had to check myself. What is my view of God, the kind of father he is, and why am I having that perspective about God the Father? Do I really think that he's going to send them off? So um, send them off without any kind of uh, preparation or any kind of provision, right? And so Jesus is already preparing them so that they know when they enter the town and they're welcome, eat what is set before you. That's implying that Jesus already knows that people would be commissioned to feed them, right? Right? Heal the sick who are there and tell them the kingdom of God is near to you. So even with that, as you're going, you went to go heal the sick. You went to go do these miracles. But there are people who have already been sent to bring provision to you, right? And so I just want to pause there for a moment because I sense that the people of God are going to be sent out very soon. And many of us are waiting for provision before we go. Many of us are saying, well, we, I haven't seen the check. Or I haven't seen the sponsor. Um, nobody has uh, said that they are going to um, prepare for me to go to this place. And so some of us think that the provision is going to come to us before we go and be, are sent out. And that's not so. That's not what happened here for the disciples. This is, <clears throat> the Bible is so funny. If you go to, we're going to go to Luke 22. So in my mind, I'm like, okay, what's going to happen to these disciples? Because they were sent out without anything. This is so comforting to me. Uh, Luke 22, verse 35. Then Jesus asked them, when I sent you without purse, bag, or sandal, did you lack anything? Nothing, they answered. Nothing, they answered. And he said to them, but now, if you have a purse, take it, and also a bag. And if you don't have a sword, sell your cloak and buy one. For it is written, he was numbered with the transgressors, and uh, I tell you, this must be fulfilled through me. Yes, it is written about me to reach its fulfillment. So this full circle moment where at the beginning we see Jesus give this very radical instruction. Basically, don't worry about the provision. Don't worry how you're going to get there. Don't worry how you're going to pay for it. Don't worry about anything other than the mission that I sent you to do, which is to heal the sick, to drive out demons, to go be an extension of the Lord's hands and feet. And so we see that the disciples with their own mouths were like, no, did you lack anything? No, they answered. And so first of all, I've never read that before. And me reading that, I knew that the Lord was speaking to me to comfort me because I, I admittedly can be the type of person that I want to know all the answers before I go. I want the Lord to give me all the details. I want him to tell me, who am I going to meet? What do I need? How do I prepare my mind? And Jesus is basically telling us, it's not about that. I'm sending you to go do a thing. And when you go do this thing, there will be provision waiting for you. So that's one of the themes I want to go into today's prayer with. Um, I just believe that this is a season of sending. And you're sending, the Lord is going to disperse his people far and wide. But you cannot be the type that is afraid to go without provision first. Because we say that we're doing our due diligence, that we're, um, you know, being wise, but a lot of it, we're being afraid. We're being afraid. And so we need to be honest with the Lord about that to say, Lord, I'm afraid. I can say this for myself. Lord, I'm afraid to go out there without provision. I'm afraid to go out there without covering. And you need to say that to the Lord and to say, Lord, help me in the places where I'm afraid or the places where I'm anxious, or the place where I have um, a lack mentality. Give me an abundance mindset when it comes to doing ministry. And so 
Some of you have no idea that there are even unbelievers waiting on the other side to literally feed you. The Lord has blessed them so that they can bless you. And so uh, tonight, I want to just pray into that as well as any other prayer requests that come up. Um, so I'm going to start from that point. Um, feel free. Like I mentioned earlier, um, there is a Q&A question mark right here. If you have a prayer request, please leave me a prayer request. We are tonight praying for provision for anyone who is doing the will of the Father. So, you know, we've been learning a lot in rig masterclass we're part of a, a prophetic masterclass and if it's the lord's uh, will it's his bill if he's sending you he's going to provide provision for you as well and so he wouldn't be so cruel as to give you a mission that he knew you couldn't do right the problem is sometimes we think we can do it by ourselves even me i'll be transparent when i had to fundraise for um a prophetic mission trip i was going to go on i was trying to like in my mind calculate how it's going to raise the money. I was like, okay, I'm going to do this. And the Lord just sent provision through the most unlikely people, like strangers on the internet who are new friends, virtual friends that did not know me from anyone that God put it in their heart to bless me. And so God is no respecter of persons. If he can do it for me, a child of God, he can also do it for you, a child of God. Okay. Um, and so, oh, I always forget to introduce myself. By the way, if you are just joining me and you don't follow my page, my name is Timmy Como. I am a daughter of the Most High God, and I do my best to hear the Father on behalf of his people and pray and uh, stand in the gap and intercede. So tonight is prophetic uh, prayer, and um, tonight I'm just going to join my faith with you to pray on behalf of you and the things that you're believing the Lord for. So if you have a prayer request, please drop it in the Q&A. I'd love to pray with you. And so before we do that, I'm just going to uh, pray first about provision. I'm going to pray about provision. If you need any specific kind of provision, let me know. Virgil says, be blessed, Watchman. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. All right. O tora bai sira bai o andara ba su tora bai bai ondora ba si ai 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 ondora ba si tile bale o so tora bai kara indere ba su tora bai kara ba so tora before i pray i want to share like a, a visual that i'm seeing in my mind so I don't know if you all are familiar, you know, like there are uh, Kenyan Maasai warriors who are very much like really like watchmen for their communities, right? That they watch to make sure nothing is coming to their community to threaten the safety. And I just see like there's some people who will be sent to like not actual Kenyan people, but people who have something for you it's almost like there's an authority that these people have in the spirit like I, i'm nigerian and so africans carry a lot of spiritual authority and sometimes their spiritual authority they're you know using it in other gods and gods that are contrary to um jehovah god the father almighty god um but there are people who the lord will send you their way because you're meant to impart some truth to them but you're supposed to learn from them like an authority, an authority, like an ability to stand firm in your identity. Like Maasai warriors are very proud of their lineage and their uh, heritage, where they come from. And that's like a large part of why they're able to like hone in on their special strengths. Follow me because even I don't know exactly what the Holy Spirit is trying to show me. Um, so Maasai warriors, because of their heritage, they're able to step into the fullness of it like messiah warriors are known for being fast they can jump high they have physical prowess that's not just like legend they literally their bodies are like adapted over time like they can do these things because it was it's what was required and so it's like these people um have a culture where they've grasped onto who they are who they are on the inside and it's formed how they show up in the world and so i feel like in this season 
the Lord is going to start showing you your identity, your spiritual heritage. And that spiritual heritage is where you're going to find your, um, your authenticity and your authority in the spirit. Some of us have been walking around like not fully knowing where we come from. Like it's almost like when you walk around thinking you're a cat, but you're a lion. And so you sit around and you're like, oh, I'm just gonna like drink milk and I'm gonna do all these things, but you're meant for something greater. There's like um, a spiritual authority that the Lord wants to awaken on the inside of you. Okay, here it is. So the Lord in this season is going to let you be around people who are warriors, let you be around people who know who they are unapologetically. And what you're supposed to learn from them is authority. You're supposed to learn from them authenticity. You're supposed to learn from them what what power it is to just be who God created you to be, right? And so some of us have been in spaces that are not, uh, that are not aligned with the kind of authority we have in the spirit, right? It's almost like um, eagles living with pigeons. Not that you're beneath them, but there's something about being in a space of people like like-minded flock. Um, and when the Lord wants to sharpen you, he has to take you out of the place where you are. And he has to take you amongst people who have been warring at the level in which you need to war. And so Lord, I just pray for your people right now. I thank you for a divine frustration that they feel that the thing that the enemy wants them to feel as them being isolated or them being outsiders it's you actually showing them that is not their tribe not that there's anything wrong not that they should place judgment on that church but it's not their tribe and you're trying to show them that there is a tribe it's almost like the lion king like all of a sudden you're like wait i'm not a vegetarian like i'm meant to be eating meatier things like you being a, like you feel like a hater because you sit in your church and the sermons make your stomach turn because they're so it's like drinking soup and you hate it and you feel like you're a hater but you're not it's the lord stirring a discontentment with you because you know that there's more the lord is saying there's more there's more there's more in this season and the lord wants to show you he has to expose you to people who are living in the fullness of their identity and so you need to get around such people because it's 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 in the atmosphere for you to catch it. And so part of you thinks that you have to sit and learn all these things, but the, the impartation that you will get, the impartation that you would get is that uh, just being in that space around those people, you'd catch wind of the revelation that they have about authority, right? And so... I think that the Lord in this season is going to walk you into spaces where you have interactions with those people and he might not even have you do anything but watch them. So it might be that you come across them on social media, you might see them on YouTube or something like that, but the Lord is going to make it so that you have uh, the ability to look at these warriors in action and see how they operate. And it's going to be like seamless. You're going to be like, why? Are they able to do this so easily? It's like, it's what happens when people are in alignment and they're being who they're called to be. So Lord, I just thank you. I thank you for the provision that you're bringing for your people. I thank you that the provision is coming in terms of relationships, of mentorships, of like-minded people. It's also coming in uh, the form of other resources that they need. And so Lord, I thank you that you've gone before them in this season that you've already provided even before they ask, you know what they need. And so Lord, I just break right now uh, this bondage in their mind, this place where it's like, I can't go if I don't have something in my hand. And so for some people, they don't have the sermons, but they, they're they being requested to come preach. And they're like, I don't have the word, Lord. And Lord, as they go, you will fill their minds and their spirit with the word for the people. Some of them are like, Lord, they're asking me to do this thing and I actually don't know how to do it. But Lord, as they go in obedience, you will provide along the way. And so God, um, I want to break that lie in the mind that it's like, oh, I'm not being a good steward if I don't have my stuff all together. The stuff together that they need to have is the connection with you. And that is the prerequisite for every type of ministry that you'll call them to do. And so them earnestly seeking you, being in your word and wanting to hear your voice and and being able to separate your voice from everything else. That is the base level of what you want them to do. And every other thing, you will teach them along the way. And so God, I thank you for your people. I thank you for the kingdom assignments that are on their life. I thank you for the places that are already ready to receive them. I thank you for all the places that they would go, that there would be 
all kinds of practical preparations put into place in order for them to step into it. And I pray for an ease, a supernatural ease for their assignment. Lord, I I sense that that's how they will know it's you, that things will just start to come together, that things will just start to make sense all of a sudden out of nowhere. And Lord, (coughs) I just pray that any place where they've been forcing, I see people trying like force ministry relationships, like, man, why doesn't this person want to be my mentor, my spiritual father? Like those people don't have the heart for them. And that's why you're not allowing those connections to be made. It's your mercy and it's not rejection. So I break rejection off of your people. I break fear off of your people and I release them into everything that you have for them. God, I just thank you that the people that you have for them already have a heart for them even before they met them, that there are going to be instant connections, instant kingdom relationships that are partnerships where they can link arms and be able to do something powerful for the kingdom. I thank you that they would have discernment, that they would know these people when they see them, that they would not walk past their helpers, that they would not reject the help of the people who have been sent to them, that they would not be prideful and try to do it in their own power, but they would rely on you, Lord, and they would be open to the help that you're giving them, whether it be a kingdom-minded person or a secular person that you want to use for kingdom agenda and so lord i just thank you father that in this season you're about to do a new thing and let the abundance just overflow into every area of their lives of their ministry and lord i pray that they would be blessed for their obedience because they started walking even before they saw the provision that they trusted you so much that you would um equip them on the way and so lord i pray that along the way you also give them wisdom there are some things that we do um when we're overzealous, <laughs> your word says that the zeal of the Lord consumed them. And so sometimes that zeal, it takes over even our common sense. And so Lord, I pray that there would be a marriage with wisdom and zeal, that we'd be able to approach the things of Christ with the right measure of ambition for Christ, with the right measure of fervor and faith. Um, and so Lord, I just pray that any foolhardy things that are not necessary, you would make those known as uh, options not to take, but anything that requires a bravery and a trust in you, I pray that we would be um, nudged towards that kind of option. And so Lord, I just thank you in this season for the supernatural provision that it would be so out of the ordinary that we would be forced to testify of your goodness every time when people say, well, how did you get that show? How did you meet that person? How did you get to go on that trip? How did you do that program? How did you put it all together? It's going to be the undeniable fingerprint of the Lord on everything that they do. And so Lord, we just thank you. We trust you for all that you're doing in your children's lives. God, we thank you that we are your humble servants, that we go wherever you want us to go because we trust that you've already made a way. You've gone ahead of us, preparing a place for us. And Lord, we just thank you, Father, that as we go throughout the the places that you've sent us, preaching the gospel, healing people everywhere, Lord. We thank you that your hands is on our lives, Lord, and that we would not, we would not deviate from your path. We would not go anywhere that you haven't called us to go. We would not step out of the jurisdiction that you've assigned us to. In the mighty name of Jesus, we just thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Okay. All right. Thank you, peeps. So we're going to transition to open prayer requests. If you have any, I see a few here. Excellent. Um, I think this is Ben. Um, Let me put Ben's up here so everyone can see and pray along. So this is Ben. Ben is asking for prayer for divine healing. He's been under health attack in many areas. Um, question is, do I do these often? Yes, I do them weekly. Sometimes the day changes. It's supposed to be Thursday nights, but this week something was happening Thursday. So, um, I did it on Tuesday. Um, so thank you for that question. Prayer for divine healing. Been under a health attack in many areas, asking for agreement for my family in Christ. I want to walk in the fullness of the finished work of the cross in Jesus name. Yes. Ben, I already love where your faith is. The finished work, you said, right? It's already done. We're not over here as children of God praying for healing that has already been uh, paid for. It's guaranteed. It's yours, right? So we're definitely going to pray for that. In Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we just thank you. We just thank you. We just thank you, Father, for who you are. 
I thank you, Lord, that healing is what you do. Healing is what you do. Lord, you said of, of the woman who had the issue of blood, your faith has healed you. Go in peace. And so, Lord, we just thank you that Ben's faith is going to heal him, that he will be able to go and live in the divine health and healing that you have for him. Lord, we just cover every part of his body from the tip of his head to the soles of his feet, every place where the enemy is trying to rob him of his divine health, which is his inheritance from you, Lord. We cancel every assignment of the enemy right now, God, every place where the enemy is trying to um, interrupt his health, Lord, to interrupt other areas of his life, to make him be down in the dumps, to make him uh, not be able to trust your not only ability to heal, but your willingness to heal. And so, Lord, we come against every attack of the enemy right now. We stand in agreement with him. We link arms with him, God. We lend our faith to the situation that he would be healed completely, Lord. We speak to every part of his body. We speak to his joints, any kind of inflammation, any rheumatoid arthritis, any place where um, that he's having flare-ups in his digestive system, anything like that, God. We speak to those areas and we command them to stop right now, Lord. I, I even see like like um like a volcano like erupting that sometimes it's erupting and causing a flare up and then sometimes it goes down and so something about that unpredictability in his health makes him nervous that he's not able to even function normally because he's constantly on edge when will the next flare up be when will the next um attack on my health be and so lord i just come against the even that fear in his mind that kind of bracing himself for the next uh, issue with his health and so lord we just we just serve an eviction notice to the enemy right now any spirit of infirmity we command it out in the mighty name of jesus out in the mighty name of jesus you are trespassing and we do not allow you to continue to wreak havoc on ben's body i just pray right now that lord healing be released into every part of his body we speak to his blood be purified right now in the mighty name of jesus any foreign antibody that does not belong there any foreign thing that is wreaking havoc on his perfect health we just declare it right now and it's being flushed out by the spirit of God. We just thank you, Father. We just we just wage war. We wage war on every part of his body that is acting from a place of dysfunction. And we speak healing and wholeness to his body right now, God. We speak to his mind. Part of it is that the attacks have been so severe that it's affecting his mind. That sometimes when pain clouds you, it clouds your judgment. You can't even think properly and all of those things. And so, Lord, we just pray for Ben right now. We just pray that your peace that surpasses all understanding, your perfect shalom peace will rest on him, that he would not fear, he would not fear going to sleep. I, I speak against a premature, um, I speak against any kind of premature, a fear of uh, dying before your time, a fear of going to sleep and a fear of like not waking up when you go to sleep. And so Lord, I just pray right now. Um, okay. It's for his wife. Okay. I just pray right now that any place where sleep is being interrupted because fear has uh, taken residence, we speak against the spirit of fear right now with fear be gone. Lord, you haven't given us the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and of sound mind. And so, Lord, we just thank you right now that your peace is replacing fear right now, God, that she would be confident that you who began this good work of healing on the inside of her would see it all the way to completion. I even see that there have been times where... Um, it almost feels like she's received a partial healing that got a healing before. And then it was like, oh man, it went away. Lord, we just declare right now that the healing is permanent. The healing is permanent, that it would be irreversible uh, healing that you do on the inside of her. God, we just speak that uh, you are the great physician, Lord. And so we just uh, declare that there is surgery being done in the spirit over her body right now, God. Any area where this inflammation is taking hold of her body and showing up in all sorts of places and um, interrupting her life, we just declare right now that it's being interrupted, Lord. It's being interrupted. We send your ministering angels to come and attend to her right now. Lord, we just thank you, Father, that we partner in faith for whatever it is that you're doing in order to heal and restore her. And so, God, we just thank you for this divine healing. 
this health attack, whatever the enemy is sending her way. I don't know if she's a, an intercessor, but I just sense that the enemy specifically tries to attack people in the areas of health so that they will not pray for healing for the other people in their lives. And so Lord, I just, um, I just speak a grace for intercession. It's going to seem weird that she's interceding for others when she should be praying for herself. But Lord, I just pray that you give her a grace to believe for healing, not only for herself, but other people in her life. And as people get prayed for, they will be healed and she herself will receive her healing. And so Lord, I just, um, I shut the mouth of any person in her life that is speaking words of death over her. I, I sense like a little, a web MD friend that is like, Ooh, I read this article about so-and-so who had this issue and they did this and here's an issue. And so Lord, I just pray that right now that anybody who is bringing words of uh, discouragement and fear into her, uh, her life right now, I pray that you would just silence them right now. Instead, we speak words of faith that she is healed. She is healed that by your your, uh, your, by your broken body, Lord, she has been healed. So her body doesn't have to be broken and destroyed because that's finished work that you've already done on the cross. And so we receive that healing. We claim it for her right now. And we say that it is permanent. It is permanent. She will not uh, relapse and have an issue again. Lord, I pray that she would just stand firmly because you have declared her healed. Because you have said, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace. We receive that for our sister in Christ in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Thank you for the confirmation there. Inflammation has been an issue. Thank you, spot on. Praise God. Praise God. I'm telling you, God is so aware of us. We give all glory to God. And we always want to acknowledge um, him in everything that we're doing. Okay. Here's another one here. Thank you all for sending in these prayer requests. We're going to keep praying and you all can see them so you can uh, join in prayer. This prayer request says, prayer for strength, confidence and assurance of my identity in Christ, protection against the enemy and his lies for myself and my family. God bless you, sis. God bless you too. Okay, here we go. Thank you, Jesus. What am I kidding? When I uh, start to pray, I see a funhouse mirror in front of me that the Lord is um, trying to show you who you are in this season, but the enemy is trying to distort things. And not only is he distorting things, he's magnifying human issues that you have. And he's saying, well, you're to this and you're to that. And he's making them seem actually bigger than they are. And so in this season, we literally have to tell the devil to shut up, right? Because he doesn't know you. He's trying to bring up who you used to be, but you are a new creation in Christ. And so we'll we'll join faith with you. Lord, we just thank you for our sister in Christ. We just thank you that God, you are doing a new thing in her story. I thank you, Father, that in this season of her life that she can trust you to protect her, that she doesn't have to be afraid. I know sometimes... We hear stories about, oh, you know, when you join the Lord's team, you become uh, the target practice of the enemy and the enemy is going to come do all these things to you. Lord, your word says, touch not my anointed, do my prophet no harm. And so a child of God is your anointed. And so there is no way that the enemy could come against her and succeed. And so, Lord, right now we just pray for strength. We pray for um, an assurance in who she is in you, that her assurance wouldn't come from any special rituals that she's doing or any special type of way that she has to pray. Um, I, I don't want to presume. So, um, sometimes, sometimes people will say like, Oh, you know, you need to say this specific prayer every morning or you need to cover yourself this way, or you need to do these things in order to stay safe. And, the Lord wants us to know that those kind of things are actually idolatry. They seem like religion. They seem like things that are safe to do. But actually, the Lord is like, you need to trust me that I will protect you each time. And your security, your safety is not coming from the rituals. It's coming from me. Just knowing who you are. Exactly what you said. Having an assurance in your identity as a daughter of the Most High God. And so... 
there's a verse in the Bible that I love that Jesus says, not one has the father given me, will the enemy be able to snatch from my hands? And so I always say this, you are unsnatchable, unsnatchable. Okay. And so Lord, I just pray that, um, in her life right now, that she would receive strength from that identity of who she is and that she would not rely on the faith of other people. She would not even rely on their prayers, but she would know that when she prays that you would hear her, um, and that you are attending to all of the things that she needs. And so Lord, we just plead, uh, the blood of Jesus all over her. We put a hedge of protection around her God in this season, that you would cocoon her under the shadow of your wings, that you would just guide her and protect her in the season of her life as she's growing, that you would just surround her with people who could support her and help lead her, uh, back to you. And so sometimes it can be really easy to have mentors who we can cling to for safety, but the proper mentors are meant to push us to Jesus Christ so that we go and seek the Lord, that we pray and we uh, look in the word to see Jesus. And so Lord, I just pray that in the season that you make her strong. We always uh, talk about this at church as the least of you would be as strong as David and David did mighty feats. And so Lord, I just thank you I just thank you, Father, that you would just uh, speak to her, that she would have just a true conversation with you, that she would know that she can talk to you authentically, organically, and that you hear her. Your word says the prayers of a righteous man and woman avail it much. And so when she prays, when she speaks your word, when she holds on to the promises that you've said, your word doesn't... Um, come back to you void. It always goes out to the perform, perform the thing that you sent it out to do. And so Lord, I just thank you right now in this season of her life that she would cling to your word, that she would eat your word. She would hunger and thirst for righteousness. And there is where she will find her strength. I pray that she would not be afraid to be weak. Your word says in our weakness, you are strong. And so as she prays for strength, I pray that she would know that that strength comes from being vulnerable with you. I pray that in her prayers, she would be honest about the things that she doesn't know, the places where she still needs um, encouragement, the places where she feels insecure and inadequate. And Lord, I will also pray over her family. I thank you, God, that you've raised her up in her family. Um, this is gonna sound weird to say, as a deliverer. There are some people that when the Lord saves you, He's doing it so he can save your entire bloodline. And so God, I just thank you for what you're doing in her life right now, that because she is stepping up in faith in this season, I pray that you would value and honor that obedience that she has and that her family would be protected because of the stance that she has, that she's like drawn a line in the sand and says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And so it's weird that she's not the head of her household, but she's taking that kind of stance because you've made her like the priest in her household. And so Lord, I just pray that you would help her to stay steadfast in you, that she would continue to trust you, that you would be her covering, that you would be her Lord, you would be her guide, and that you would just equip her with everything she needs to do the work that you've called beforehand for her to do. And so we release her with your blessing, with your favor, and we just thank you, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. Okay, thank you for the confirmation. Amen. So accurate, she says. Okay, praise God. I'm telling you, the Lord knows you. The Lord knows you and he hears you. And um, I'm, I'm grateful that I can agree with you in prayer. Um, someone says here, there's no specific prayer. The prayer is in your heart. Correct. Um, we don't need to recite the rosary or do anything like that. Pray as you are led by the spirit of God. Um, and he listens when you pray. Ooh, we have our sis who is on her mission trip. Praise the Lord. I'm on my mission trip currently and the grace to spread uh, the gospel. Oh, praying for the grace to spread the gospel effectively and provision for the rest of the finances. Okay, praise God. Oh, wow. Thank you so much, sis. Yes, praise God. Yes, you're most welcome. Most welcome. Okay, so let's pray for our missionary who is overseas currently. Lord, we just thank you. We thank you, Father for what you're doing. We just thank you um, that we we get to be along for this journey, um, that you're making her life a sign and a wonder that people would see her testimony, um, see where she's come from in her faith and where she is now and where she's going. And they would turn and testify and say that it's only God, it's only God who gives this kind of boldness, this kind of courage. And so Lord, I thank you for the transformation that's happening on the inside of her. I thank you for even more boldness to speak your truth, speak the gospel, to speak the life-changing gospel. Um, I just feel um, led to say 
your conviction is going to save people. The fact that you're convicted and you truly, truly believe that Jesus saves is not just something to put on a on a dashboard or, or on a bumper sticker. You really believe that Jesus saves. Why? Because you've seen it. You've seen your own life. You've seen other people's lives be transformed. And so that simple conviction is going to make the gospel messages you give so powerful to people. Um, and so you already have the grace to speak the gospel and spread it effectively. Um, it's a matter of just speaking with that same conviction. I don't know if this happens to you when you start talking about the gospel and people are like, that's kind of intense. But it's because you believe what you're saying. And the more and more you believe what you're saying, the more it captures the heart of people. And so, Lord, I just pray right now for an increased measure of grace for evangelism, an increased measure of grace for signs and for wonders that when she prays, she will see the exact direct result of her prayers immediately before her eyes. Your word says that signs and wonders will follow those who believe. And she believes you, Lord. And so, Lord, I pray that there would be tangible evidence of your hand on her life, that God, you would use her, um, her life as an extension of your power, that people would be able to see the manifest presence of God in her life, that when she walks into the room, the atmosphere will shift. God, I pray that you prepare her for the deliverance that's coming. Literally people screaming when she walks into the room. She hasn't even started praying. She hasn't even started saying anything. But Lord, I pray that demons would tremble um, when she walks into a place. And so I'm even reminded, uh, wow, God is good. Um, Luke 10, my Bible just happened to open there. Luke 10, 20 says, however, do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your name is written in heaven. And so I just sense that that is the peace. That is the peace that is going to be uh, the part that saves people. People are gonna be like, whoa, how did you do that? How did you know to pray that? Lord, I speak words of knowledge coming out of her right now. I pray that she would begin to flow with words of wisdom, words of knowledge, spirit of prophecy fall on her right now, God, for the work that you've called her to do. And so Lord, right now, let it be that people hear from her and they're like, how do you know that? The places where she's going, they're gonna think it's witchcraft. They're gonna think that it's some other power, but let it be a moment where she can evangelize and speak to the power of God, speak to the fact that Jesus has sent her to go to these people and she's gone because Jesus sent her and it's the Holy Spirit that's giving her utterance. And so Lord, when people start to say, oh my goodness, Demons are trembling in your presence. She's going to say, I am rejoicing that I am a child of the most high God and my name is written in heaven and your name can be written in heaven too. And so it's going to be a gospel message opening. And so Lord, I just pray that you, you spin it together for her, that you put it together. Um, I really sense that the Lord is going to start giving you almost like a script, like a way that you hook people so that they are paying attention. And so they're going to come for the signs and wonders. They're going to come because they're like, well, what's God saying to me? Um, you know, what is God doing in this time? They're going to want to know more. And so that means that Sis, you're going to have to be on your face. You're going to have to be quiet a lot more and hear the Lord speaking to you um, on behalf of the other people. And so, Lord, I pray that you just sharpen her senses. Let all of her senses be so aware of you that she'd be able to smell, hear, see, uh, taste in the spirit that she would know what is happening, uh, what kind of shifts are going on. And so, Lord, I pray that you would just partner with all of her senses in order to heighten her prophetic ability in this place, Lord, that not only would this prophetic rest on her, but it would rest on the entire uh, mission trip group. And Lord, a spirit of prophecy fall, spirit of healing fall, spirit of revelation fall in that place, Lord. I pray that God, that this would be uh, such an impactful trip that it would mark her, mark her as yours, that people would know that she was sent by you, that your glory would rest on her, that they would look at her and know that she's been in your presence, that they would know that she is a daughter of the most high God. We release the rest of the provision that she needs, just like we prayed earlier when you sent out the disciples, they went with nothing, but in your word, it said that they lacked nothing. They lack nothing. And so Lord, we thank you that your children, they lack no good thing. They lack no good thing. Psalms 34, 10 says, young lions go lacking and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. And so we claim that over her life right now. We send her as a missionary that has been commissioned by the Lord Jesus Christ to win souls, to, uh, to spread the gospel, to share the love of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. We even use you as a point of contact for all of our 
missionary friends who are going to be sent out pretty soon. Okay, we have a few more here. We're gonna go with Pearly Meg. Hey, Johnny, welcome. Prayer for strength, clarity, and focus in my life. Also for my prayer life and my career. Thank you, sis. You're most welcome. Okay. Um, I see a, a vision of you like sitting at a work desk and pushing yourself away from the desk. And I don't know what that means. Whether you push yourself away from the desk, you're considering distancing yourself from a certain type of work. But I'll pray um, from what I'm sensing. Lord, I just thank you for your daughter. I thank you. I almost see you like a stuffed envelope. You know when you try to put wads of cash into an envelope and it's not closing properly because it's too full? I feel like you're you're too full, you're too packed that um, you're trying to squeeze yourself into this traditional work envelope type of situation. Um, and so, Lord, I just thank you for your daughter. I thank you that you never tried to box her in. I thank you, Father, that you're never trying to limit her and say you can only do this. And you don't see her career or her trajectory like other people do. You see her in the fullness of all you've called her to be. And so, Lord, right now, I just pray that there would be no confusion or double-mindedness in her, in her mind right now. We just speak your peace and your clarity over her right now. That, God, that she would begin to take a step back and almost like, Look at her life from an eagle eye perspective that she would start to see all of the themes that you've been showing her all along. I really sense that there have been opportunities that she has had that to the untrained eye seem random, but you're trying to um, put together themes of things that she's good at. Um, you know, there's some people who really can put together a project or they can put together events really well. And so, Lord, I just pray that you would help her to start to see the themes of her life, that you would help her in this season to hold on. I sense that there is very like specific timing when it comes to jobs and transitions into um, roles and into careers that, Lord, I pray that you'd help her to be patient and to trust you for your perfect timing. It's I, I see it like a um, double dutch, that you are so multi-talented. So there are gonna be many opportunities that come your way, but what the Lord wants to do with you is to help you with your timing that you are going to have to like gauge, okay, when is the right time to jump in? When is the right time to jump out? And so the enemy wants you to overstay so that you can wear yourself out. I, I see, like, I perceive you being in that loop where it's like, okay, you're talented and you're smart. So you could jump through hoops and you can be the person who is like doing all the things, but it's exhausting. And there's no sustainability, there's no longevity in that type of work because it's not, it's not in alignment. And so, Lord, I just pray right now for her that you would make her have a shift. I feel like it's not even a whole uh, 180, that it's like a slight pivot. Um, with my coaching practice, I always talk about how people need to do like slight pivots. Sometimes we overcorrect because we're like, I hate this, I need to get out of this. And we try to leave completely. It might be even like a, a new department or a new something that is like a little bit close to what you're doing now. And so Lord, I just pray right now that whatever adjustment needs to be made, that you would not only bring insight, but you'd also bring a helper to make that transition to be smooth. And so God, I just thank you that there's already someone who has seen her work. There's already someone who is um, mindful of her and is even fond of her, but maybe uh, she hasn't had the opportunity to speak transparently about where she is in her career. And so, Lord, I just pray that you would make an opening, an opportunity to, for her to have that conversation. And I pray that that helper, I pray that that helper or that sponsor, whoever it is that you're putting in place, that they would come into alignment with what you have for her. And so, God, I just thank you for this season of her life that she would have. Um, a singular focus on the instructions that you've given her. There's some things that she has specific instructions about and things that she has no clue about. And so I feel like the Lord is saying, the things you have no clue about, leave them alone. It's okay. Leave them in his hands because he's taking care of it. But the specific things that he's told you about, you're meant to take care of those things and have like a singular focus. Um, because 
because you are high angel, um, because you are so multi-talented, people will want to draw you into work that is literally none of your business. And so in this season, you have to have blinders on to be like, nope, that has nothing to do with me. I can do it, but I'm not going to because it's not my assignment for this season. And so, Lord, I just pray for strength that you keep her. Give her stamina, 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 stamina. And I sense that it's one of those things where you used to have so much strength. You used to have so much stamina. I even sense you're one of those like GT kids who has high capacity that can do a lot of things. And all of a sudden the high capacity is not high capacity anymore. If you feel me? Um, and so Lord, I just pray for a respite that there would be a pause, a moment to take a breath, a moment to reflect and think about what's going on. What do I need to do? And so Lord, I just, I, I want to give her the comfort that it's not all on her. I think there's a lie of the enemy. That's like, I almost see like, balls being juggled in the air and it's like oh if i take a break something's gonna break something is gonna fall through the cracks and that's actually not true that you're giving her some things to have stewardship over but the other things it's almost like um like being in a zero gravity room like it's actually you keeping all those balls in the air and she doesn't have to worry about all of those things and so lord i just release your peace to her right now i break off any anxiety any imposter syndrome any spirit of overwhelm we break it over her off of her right now god and we release to her your peace release to her your competency your confidence that she would know that it's you who is equipping her for the good work that you've sent her to and so lord i just thank you that right now that she would stand to her full height um i even sense that there are people who are intimidated by her that she is maybe uh more junior than certain people but she walks with an authority that might like low-key piss people off and intimidate them and they're like making things hard for her because it's like why are you so confident you just got here you don't know all the stuff and so lord i just pray that she would know this godly confidence comes from you and it's an assurance that comes from knowing who she is and so lord i pray that she would not be bullied she would not be intimidated she would not be silenced in the workplace but going back to what you were revealing earlier that you would teach her the timing there are certain times where she should reveal what she knows and certain times that she should keep it to herself. And so I pray you would teach her the discretion that's needed for this, um, for this time that you would uh, teach her to just hold what she knows until the appointed time. And so Lord, I just thank you for the transitions are coming. I thank you, Lord, that the, the favor is already there. She's already been seen by the person who's going to promote her. I pray that she would not be uh, bashful about the projects she's doing. I so weird i see um like a project plan that she has created and someone literally putting like masking tape on top of her name and writing their own name on top of it uh we just interrupt every plan of the enemy to steal credit and to steal uh to steal the work that she's done and i pray that lord it's you who rewards in secret uh rewards the things done in secret and so lord i pray that you would just you would just reveal it. And I almost see it like a, a Haman situation, like a person being like, well, this is what I would do for someone who is awesome. This is the kind of promotion that I would give them. And literally they are like writing your job description because they think it's for them. And so Lord, I just pray that you would just stand in the gap. Um, we, we just stand in the gap for her right now. And so Lord, we just pray that you would just show her that there are certain things that are her responsibility and then the rest is up to you. And so I pray that you'd help her to distinguish the two, that she would be faithful with what you've put in her hand, but she would trust you for the rest of it. So we just thank you, we trust you, we release all of the good things, all of the instructions, all of the peace that you have for her. We release it to Pearly Meg right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. As a career coach, um, workplace drama is especially, especially dear to my heart. I, I hate to see it, honestly. And I hate to see good people like chased out of the workplace. So um, I sense that that's what they might be trying to wear you out. And by the grace of God, you won't go until the Lord sends you. Until you are promoted, you will not go until they send for you. So that's what I am praying for you this season. Okay, let's take a few more. I see four up here, so I think I'm gonna wrap with that. You're most welcome, you're most welcome. Okay, praying for, this is naturally, natural me, LC, praying for direction concerning going back to school, moving to a new apartment, whether or not to leave my current job. Thank you, okay. 
a lot to work through. Okay, but God can do it. God can speak very clearly. In Jesus' name, Lord, we just thank you. I don't know why I'm hearing like a weird, why would I choose when I could have both is what I'm, <laughs> don't, don't take that as like, don't say it the Lord. That's just what popped into my mind. Um, Lord, I just pray for your daughter right now. I just pray that you would just silence all of the noise. Um, is weird. I, you know how that there's a SpongeBob meme where he's like, oh, and it's Mr. Krabs looking around dizzy, like all of the things are shaking. I feel like the enemy wants to bring so much panic around this decision, um, making it seem like it's a make or break type of thing. That um, hi, Lundy, uh, making it seem like it's one of those things that if you don't do it right now that you'll miss your you you'll miss your uh your train and i want to just break that right now lord i just break off any spirit of panic or any like any feeling that she has her back against the wall i just pray that she would turn and see the abundance of choices the abundance of options that you have available for her in this season and so lord i just pray for direction when it comes to making um a decision about going back to school staying at her job and so lord i pray that any place where these decisions are being made from a place of lack from a place of oh i don't have enough money or who will watch i don't know if you have children who will watch the children or who will take care of this and who will take care of that I pray that you would just show to her, even in this week alone, that she has so much support, that she has so many options, that there are so many things that you've already put into place, knowing that there would be a time that you'd be considering these choices. And so, Lord, I just pray that you would line up all of the things that need to happen in order for her to successfully transition into the next stage of her life, whether it be school leaving her job, going to something else. And so, Lord, I just pray that you would just um, highlight all of the options that she has. And I pray that you would um, confirm to her what it is that you want her to do. And so, Lord, I just pray. Um, I just pray for uh, favor as she's moving into this new apartment. I pray that this apartment would be a place that is a place of peace and solace and comfort and security. I pray that as she moves into it, Lord, that there would just be um, a safety. I just, I just feel you making it a safe haven for her. And so wherever it is that she goes, I pray she will have favor with uh, landlords or anyone that she has to uh, work with in order to secure this new place. I pray that it would be an easy transition for her, that there would be no fear, there would be no anxiety, that there, even with, um, thinking about leaving her job and the timing of all of those things. We just pray for your supernatural provision in this season of her life, that you would show her exactly how to move, how fast, um, where to go, with whom, all of the things. And so, Lord, I just pray that all of the proper resources that she needs will be waiting for her when she takes a step of faith. Um, I sense that part of the waiting, she's like, oh, I'm waiting for a sign. But I sense that the Lord is waiting for you, that there's certain things that he's asking you to um, do so that he can get the ball rolling. And so, Lord, I pray that whatever courage and faith it takes for her to take that next step, I pray that you would just show her what she ought to do next and that you would be with her. We just thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Um, I want to share my own transition and thinking about going to grad school. So I was a teacher and I was teaching with um, Teach for America and loved it. It was great. Um, but then I started thinking about going to grad school. And so it was literally 50-50. Like I could have flipped a coin because I could have stayed with teaching. I could have gone to grad school either way. But I really wanted God's perfect timing for my life. And so I remember I was just scouring on the internet and just trying to see like, okay, what should I do? And it just so happened that the schools that I was looking at, there was a specific scholarship for a specific major. And so I was like, hmm, well, let's see, I'll just apply. And it was actually quite specific that it was very uh, competitive. And I remember waiting to open the letter and be like, well, if I get this scholarship, I'm going to leave my job and I'm going to go to school. And if I don't get it, I will just stay. 
right? But the step of faith was me actually applying. And so I actually got into the program and I was like, well, I guess I have to leave my job and I guess I'm going to grad school. But the grace of God is that this is a very expensive program and it was a two year grad program. And my first year um, was pretty much fully funded, which is kind of unheard of for that program. It just, I had TA ships, other things like that that funded it. And my second year was completely funded. And I only left the grad program with like $10,000 in student debt. And this is a $60,000 a year program. And I just had that debt because uh, I didn't know that I didn't have to say yes to the loan that they gave me. And so as soon as I graduated my first job, I paid it off right away. And I say that to say my testimony, every time you hear a testimony, it's an invitation to say, God, do it again. Right. And so if God did it for me, he can most definitely do it for you. He can, number one, confirm if you're supposed to go to school. He can confirm if you're supposed to leave your job. And if you decide to go there, he could provide for it. Absolutely. It's no problem for him. There, um, the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous. Right. And so that is there for you for the taking. You are a child of God. And so that belongs to you. And so I just release that grace for scholarships, that grace for um, provision when it comes to schooling. If that is your portion, if that's what you're asking for from the Lord, um, he definitely is more than able to uh, exceed your expectation. So I tell that testimony so that you can latch onto it and believe for it. Let it be that if you're going to school, let it be that, uh, it's because the Lord sent you and this is the time of the season. If you decide not to go, let it be because you just didn't want to go, not because you were afraid. So um, that is that is my prayer for you for that. She says, thank you so much, sis. That really blessed me. Praise God. And I pray that you have a testimony like I had, that you'd be able to testify of God's goodness, that people would see like, man, God is out here writing checks, right? Praise God. Hi, Ty. Hello. Okay. I'll take a few more prayer requests. If you just joined, there's a question mark button like here. If you want to submit a prayer request before we end tonight. Um, I'm trying not to miss anyone. Okay, here we go. Um, pray for courage. The Lord is leading me on a new path. I desire to do what pleases him. If we could pray again against the spirit of fear. For sure, for sure. Lord, Father, I just thank you that you give your son a sound mind for the spirit of fear. A sound mind, a sound mind, a sound mind. I just sense that in the season, um, I, I feel like the Lord is almost going to put you like, they always make it sound like a bad thing, like an echo chamber where he's going to like isolate you. So you only hear the voice of the Lord. And that's the thing that will echo in your spirit. That's the thing that's going to give you courage. Um, I sense that there are very well-intentioned people who might be trying to be like, well, this is the practical thing to do, or maybe you should try this. And some of their advice is stealing your courage. And so, um, Lord, I just pray for your son. I just pray, or is it dog? I think it's a guy. I pray for your son uh, that he would have courage for this new path that you are sending him on. And Lord, I just pray that you make it very clear, very clear what direction he ought to be going in, how fast, all of the details that he needs for the season of his life. I pray that you would honor him for his desire to do what pleases you, Lord. And God, I just thank you, Father, that you are a rewarder of those who diligently seek you. And so God, as he's seeking your will, as he's seeking your face, as he's wanting to hear your instructions so clearly, <laughs> I can't see your face. <laughs> As he's wanting to hear your instructions so clearly, I pray that you would just, um, that you would reveal to him all of the pieces of the puzzle. Um, God, I, I sense that there's some things that are still a mystery to him and some things are a mystery for his own safety so that he doesn't get intimidated. I sense that there is quite a big call on his life and this step is even bigger than he knows. But Lord, I just pray that in this season that you would just help him um, to be able to step with courage. Lord, I just, I I'm sensing that there are certain people who are new that are entering his life that he hasn't known in previous seasons, but they're specifically here so they can be a captive audience for what you're doing in his life. And so there's sometimes when you send us on a new journey that 
because they're places where we might feel like, oh, we're, we're shaky because we're not sure we haven't done it before. Sometimes we want to flounder in private, but at times you send people our way who can um, have a front row seat to the things that you're doing in our lives. And so, Lord, I just thank you for these men specifically that you're bringing into his life who are able to see uh, he is a pioneer. You're taking him on a new path that others will go behind him. And so, Lord, I thank you that you tell him that he is a mighty man of valor, that you ask him to go with the uh, strength that he has and you will give him more strength as he goes. And so, Lord, I just thank you for the season of his life. I thank you for his obedience, for his willingness to hear you at the first time that you uh, speak to him. I thank you, Father, that uh, any spirit of fear is being broken right now, God, that you make him a mighty man, that he's able to hear the instructions that you've given him and he's able to walk in the fullness of all who he is called to be. I pray that he would not shrink. I pray that he would not even take on anyone else's um, approach. Uh, I'm hearing like, don't put on Saul's mantle. Don't put on Saul's armor. And so Lord, I know that there are people who might say, oh, do it this way, but you've uniquely called him for this journey. You put him on this path and he wants to please you. And so Lord, I pray that you would give him everything that he needs in order to obey you properly. And so sometimes that is courage. Sometimes that is a perspective that he would be able to see this path that he's on and that he can look at it from a different direction. Um, and so Lord, I just thank you for the heights that you're taking him to. I thank you that even in the echo of the echo chamber that you're putting him through, that he would not be lonely, that your rod and your staff would comfort him, that even in the places where you have to discipline him and get him into order, that he would find it comforting to know that you are actually whipping him into shape in certain areas. And so, Lord, I just thank you for the season of his life. I thank you for the courage that is falling on him now that there is a new uh, bravado, there's a new bravery, there's a new gusto that is coming to him, that he would attend to this calling that you've given him and he would have no regrets and he wouldn't look back, that he would not try to integrate his old life into his new life. And so Lord, we just release him into the fullness of all that you have for him in this season in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 I don't know if you caught it earlier. He said, daughter, I have a fade. I have to tell y'all, I am not wearing glasses, so I don't know what y'all look like over here. If I saw you on the street, by the way, uh, I've met two people now that I've prayed for on these lives. I've met them in real life and it was so delightful. Um, so we'll see if God does it again, but I always love when that happens. Um, I'm trying to do this in order. Oh, I'm sorry. I um I guess I didn't understand that prayer request. The prayer request earlier about jobs, I'm praying that I made the right decision by taking this new career opportunity and it brings financial stability, career stability, and growth. I'm still very anxious about it. Okay, sorry about that. I will re-pray. Okay. Lord, I just thank you for your daughter. Um I hope this doesn't come off the wrong way. Any double-mindedness, Lord, that doesn't come from you, I break it off of her right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I break off the spirit of anxiety. I pray that you would give her the ability to rightly perceive a thing in order to make the right decisions. And so, Lord, I... I um, I feel like... um. I feel like the enemy is trying to bring regret to you to, oh, I haven't prayed yet. Okay. Okay, cool. Uh, I feel like the enemy is trying to bring regret to you to say, well, if it's the Lord, it should be easier. And that's not necessarily how the Lord works. And so sometimes the Lord is trying to stretch a part of your muscle that hasn't been ever stretched before. And so sometimes the discomfort isn't necessarily a sign that you did the wrong thing. Sometimes it's a sign that you're doing something new a place where the Lord wants to stretch you. And so Lord, I just pray for your daughter. I just pray that right now in this season of her life that you would just be with her in whatever decision that she makes, that she would hear your voice and she would hear you more clearly, that she'd be able to discern your voice from her own will. And that God, if this is the right decision that you've um, asked her to make, I pray that you continue to confirm it to her over and over again. Um, but God, that she would just have a peace that no matter what has been done, that you are with her and that God, um, that you're able to help her reroute 
out of anything that is not for her. And so, Lord, with this new career opportunity, I pray that she would have uh, alignment with you, that you would nudge her all the way into perfect alignment, that even if it's challenging, that you would give her the grace for this new assignment. Even if this is something that she needs to do briefly on her way to something else, I pray that where she is right now, that you'd help her to even uh, succeed in this place. And so, Lord, I pray for favor, for financial stability and uh, stability in her uh, her growth. Uh, Lord, any fear, any fear of like, Sometimes imposter syndrome makes you fear like, man, they're going to find out I don't really know this stuff and they're going to fire me and I'm not going to have a job. Any fear that's attached to that of being like replaceable, I pray that God, you would just quiet the, the voice of the enemy right now, that she would just know that sometimes, Lord, you're planting your people in specific places for a specific time. And so, Lord, I pray that she would just honor the prompting that's on the inside of her, that she would hear your voice, that she would be led by your spirit that God, she would not be hasty. Um, there's, <laughs> there's some people who have like ants in their pants where it's like, you get to a place and you're like, no, I gotta go. I gotta go right now. And it's like, almost like the person who, uh, is looking at the, uh, the exit in a, in a plane. It's like, okay, I can, I can leave right now. Don't. If the Lord put you there, you should stay there. Right. And so they're not going to replace you. They can't remove you if the Lord placed you there. Okay. And so Lord, I just thank you father for, um, I thank you for what you're doing in her life right now. Um, she says, yes, it's a contract position. So being replaceable is a fear. Wow. Yeah. So Lord, we just silence that. We silence whatever the enemy is going to do. And so Lord, it's not even about permanence. We don't want to overstay in any place we're not meant to be. But if you place this there, you place us there for a reason. And no devil in hell can remove us. And so Lord, right now, in this place, I pray that this would be something that transitions her into something more permanent. I thank you, Lord, that you're using it as a um, building block for her career. I see it as like, um, so my niece likes to play with Legos. Sometimes there is a special like connecting Lego that makes makes it so that you can build something in a different direction. And so, Lord, this building block is meant to help her build in a different place. And so, Lord, I pray that this would not be the prize for her, that, that she would see that you started a momentum in her career and you who began it will see it all the way to completion. And so Lord, I just pray for your favor and your covering over her. I pray for grace, even if she makes mistakes, even if she doesn't know all of the things that you'd catch her up to speed, that you'd give her a spirit of excellence with everything that she does. So much so that whoever the Pharaoh is at her workplace would see her work and have a uh, give her favor in whatever it is that she's doing. And I pray that her work would be so visible and be at such a high standard that it would lead to promotion and a permanent role in wherever it is that you want her to be. And so I just break anxiety off of her right now. And we just release her, Lord, with your peace, your perfect shalom peace. And Lord, we just ask for your covering and the work that she does, um, that she would just be able to learn quickly on the job, that she would have a greater understanding of the, the concepts uh, the industry, that you would even give her insights, that you'd give her ways of understanding what it is that uh, you want her to do. And so sometimes we think that we're doing a job, but sometimes we're there to shift atmosphere. Sometimes we're there to impart something or to reach people. I pray that she would even be a witness on this job. The very fact that you've placed her here in this contract role means that you have an assignment for her and for the people you're sending her to. And so Lord, I pray that she would be obedient to that assignment as well. And so Lord, we just, um, we bless her in this new career opportunity. Praise God. Congrats. Lord, I just thank you for, um, for securing this for her. We thank you in advance for all the new opportunities that will come her way as a result of her taking this challenging job and uh, stretching herself. And so Lord, I just thank you in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Okay. Let's see. Oh, good. We have three more. Um, I pray. <laughs> I love these prayers. Okay, I pray for God's direction in choosing the right spouse in my career. Can the church say amen? Okay, all right. Sorry, I'm being serious because it's a really important prayer request, but I think we have a few people who can agree in prayer for that one. So thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, yay. I see a comment. Wow, thank you so much. God bless you, sis. This is blessing me right now. Virtual hug. Virtual hug. Yay. 
Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I just um I just sense that you're kind of wanting to impart to all of your children that it's not about choosing the right one, but being the right one. So that is being the right one as a spouse, being the right one for the career. And so, Lord, I just thank you for the season of preparation. Um, this season where it's like you literally standing your daughter in front of yes I promise you this life will be saved I save all my lives um Lord I just thank you that you're uh standing her in front of a mirror and you're saying okay these are all the things that I want to prepare you for and so sometimes that preparation in the natural we want to go and nitpick almost like we're with the plastic surgeon we're like well I don't like my nose and I don't like my hair and I don't like the way and the Lord's like no 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 that's not the kind of preparation I want to do I'm talking about this and so the Lord is having you stand in front of the mirror to say okay let me see how I'm reacting to my family let me see how I'm reacting to my friends let me let me hear the words that I'm saying and so the Lord really wants to reflect back to you what is happening in this season and so Lord I just pray for your daughter I just pray that in this season that she would be so aware of the areas that you are preparing her I pray that that she would um that she would trust you that you have been preparing her all along that it's not a matter of perfection that it's not a matter of um, her having all of the right things like either in her career or for having the right spouse but it's her standing in the fullness of who she is and saying Lord perfect me in the ways that I need to be perfected. And so, Lord, I see you like um, smoothing out the rough edges. Like, so I, I went to go get my nails done today and it's almost like an emery board, like shaping the parts, shaping the parts. So it's like, this part of you is a little sharp and I need it to be softer. This part of you um, reacts when this thing happens and I need you to react in a different way. And so Lord, all of these lessons, when you do this it's for our well-being and so lord i just pray for the career that you have for her i just thank you that she's being prepared even now to step into that career that you have for her i thank you lord that it's already been uh, chosen those people already know who it is that they need for this role and so god i just thank you that it's not about her nitpicking and and trying to find what's wrong with herself it's about her saying lord perfect me help me show me the process of being more and more who you want me to be. I always uh, reflect on how you told me there's a version of ourselves that does the most good in the world. And that's constantly who you're trying to make us out to be. And so Lord, I pray that she would commit to the process, that she would lean into you, that she would trust you, that she would know that it's you who is helping her, who's leading and guiding her, that she doesn't have to be perfect. And so I break the spirit of perfectionism off of her right now. I release her Lord into an authentic walk with you, that it would literally be her making tweaks and adjustment as you reveal new things to her. I break off any spirit of offense. I break off any um, kind of um, place where uh, she's felt like she has had to protect herself because people have been hypercritical of her. And so Lord, I just pray that you would show her in this season, it's about love. It's about love. And so uh, let there be no, um, as you're shaping her, let it be a, a uh, a soft type of shaping that she would start to see all of these tweaks as an act of love and uh, an act of your mercy. You don't want her to go into marriage or career without being shaped properly. And so that shaping can be done on the run. Um, she doesn't have to sit herself down and get herself together before she's qualified for the right spouse or the right job or career. And so Lord, I just thank you. I release her into all that you have for her in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Ooh, we got Rig London in the house. Hello. Hello, how are you? You like my accent? Okay, cool. Perfect. Pray for that. Thank you, God. Okay, we have a few. I'm going to combine. Oh, y'all are sneaking in these prayer requests and thinking I don't see. Okay, prayer for removing noise and busyness to have time to seek the Lord and grace for transition to career and sales uh, to a data related job. Okay. Maragio Kosundarama Sikesora Yete. 
Onama. You're welcome. You're welcome, Princess. Groba se kurama se tere ke sonderama se. Reke sende nama sa tarama sa ta. Ko sonderama so rama sa tarama. Mara ye ko so. Ye so to rama sa ka sara ye ko rapati. A verse is coming to mind and I don't want to misquote it. Um, Lord, your word says that you lead us beside still waters and you restore our soul. And I just sense that you're calling Gen Med into a season of stillness with you, like a stillness that doesn't make sense, that it seems like she actually doesn't have time for the stillness, but I think that's precisely what you're calling her to, that you would almost like multiply the free time she has when she spends time with you. Um, and Jen, I'm going to be just really, really practical. I don't know if you have a body of water. Thank you, Psalms 23. Thank you. I don't know if you have any man-made lake or body of water or anything next to you. Um, I feel like the specific instructions that the Lord has for you are ones that he'll give to you as you you start to like separate yourself to have a moment. Um, so I'm actually, I'm going to read Psalm 23. Thank you so much for mentioning that. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. One version says, I have all that I need. He makes me lean, lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his namesake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Lord, I just thank you for your daughter. I thank you, God, that you're carving out time right now in her schedule to seek you. To seek you. Your word says better is one day in your courts than thousands elsewhere. And so, Lord, I, I thank you for that way that you're able to expand time, that when she spends, even devotes one day out of her week to just fully, fully hear from you, one hour out of her day, 30 minutes, whatever it is, five minutes, whatever she has, I pray that you would just expand that for her, that you would remove all of the distractions, all of the noise. I pray that time would just stand still, just like uh, you caused, the, I think, the sun to uh, to stand still just to perform a miracle, I pray that you do something similar in her life, that all of the busyness, all of the tasks that she has to attend to, that they would just stand still and wait, wait for her to spend time with you because your word says that in doing so, you're restoring her soul. We just speak a restoration for all the parts of her soul that need to be um, brought back, all the places where she's felt depleted, all of the places where she felt like um, she's given her all and has nothing left to give. I pray that even in the stillness that you begin to refresh her and refuel her, renew her for the assignment that she has for the day. And Lord, I just pray for a special grace for transition that as she's wanting to transition um, uh, to a more data related job, I pray that you'd make it an easy shift for her. I even see like as she's looking at her, at her resume, I pray that you would give her new language for her experiences, that she'd be able to translate her experience into the language of this new one. And so Lord, I pray that you would just help her to see her past experiences in light of this new industry that she's trying to go to. As she's making this shift, I pray that you'd make it a seamless, graceful uh, transition for her. God, your word says that she shall not want, she shall have all that she needs. And so God, what, whatever she needs to make this transition, whether it's expertise, know-how, training, connections, whatever it is, I pray that those resources would come to her right now, that she would just uh, listen to you for the exact instructions that you have. I, I even feel like she has colleagues from uh, college or from other parts of schools, people who she knows that are connections to this new place. And maybe, I don't know if you felt shy to reach out to them like maybe you didn't want to bother people but god whatever prompting you have for her in order to make a, a gracious a graceful pivot 
and transition, I pray that you give her those instructions and um, make it very clear to her what she ought to do. And so God, I just thank you that she's being obedient to the prompting. She senses that there's a shift in her life, in her career, and she needs to go to this new place. And so Lord, I just pray that you'd help her as she's uh, walking through uh, this season of transition. And so Lord, we just release her into this new season that you have for her. I just sense, um, I just sense like a, a well done that you're wanting to say to her that she stewarded her last season really well. Um, even with the busyness, even with all that was going on, I just sense a well done. I, part of her might be saying, oh, I could have done more. I could have been better at this. But with what she had, uh, I feel like she was faithful with it. And so, Lord, I just thank you uh, for that desire to be faithful, to be a good steward of time, to be a good steward of resources. And so, Lord, I pray that you would bless her bless her, bless her, that she would see the harvest of the seeds that she planted in past seasons. And so Lord, we just release all of your blessings and the richness of the abundance that she has as a daughter of the most high God in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay. I have a double one here. Okay. Pray for this one. Hoyen, prayer for courage to face the distractions I'm facing in my life right now in my home and in my spirit. And then also strength and direction for the journey ahead. Okay. You're welcome, Jen, man. Lord, I thank you for your daughter, Hoyen. I thank you, Father. Uh, your word says that your boundary lines are falling on her in, in pleasant places. And so, God, I just thank you right now that it's you who um, who is her shield and her defense. I thank you, Lord, that you surround her on every side that there is safety and there is security in you. God, I just come against any spirit of torment, any place where the enemy is intimidating her, tormenting her in her own house, um, any distraction, anything that's keeping her from being focused on the season that she's in right now, um, any distractions when she's trying to pray, when she's trying to read the word, any place where it's loud in her mind, any place where she's unsettled and unable to sleep, we break every yoke of darkness. We revoke every assignment of the enemy, any place, every window, every opening that he has crept through, any place where the enemy is uh, whispering lies, whispering deception, um, bringing heaviness to her. I pray that God right now that you would just... Um, reverse the curse of the enemy right now and so lord we just speak courage courage over her right now and lord i pray that you would help her to remember that she is a daughter of the most high god that she has authority that comes from knowing you that she doesn't have to be afraid of the enemy that she doesn't have to be intimidated that she can literally use the word of god to wage war against the enemy and Lord, we're not ignorant of his schemes. We're not ignorant of his devices. When it's time for us to arise and be the men and women that God has called us to be, he starts to make his chatter even louder. And so Lord, we silence the voice of the enemy right now. We silence every familiar spirit. We silence every um, every person that once had access that's trying to come around. Like, it's so annoying, but I don't know if this makes any sense, but I'm set, like those hey, big head type of uh messages where it's like, hey, what are you doing? When you finally found peace, people trying to come around to disturb your peace. And so Lord, I just pray right now against any distractions sent from the enemy, whether it be through people, whether it be through opportunities even that seem good, but are not from you. I pray that you would be able to discern by the spirit what the enemy is trying to do in the season of her life. And I pray that she would not uh, fall victim to any of the old schemes. I, I'm sensing that there are like familiar patterns of, um, of temptation that the enemy is going to bring like places where you used to stumble in the past things that like if they were waved in front of your face you would most definitely fall in this season you're a new creation in christ and so the lord is giving you strength for the journey ahead and lord i just pray that you give her direction 
that she's able to go forth with the uh, instructions that you've given her. I pray that it would be very clear where she ought to go and what she ought to do, that there would be no confusion, that uh, she would not be like Lot's wife looking behind her in regret, that she would not turn into a pillar of salt, but God, she would look forward ahead, that she would forget the former things because behold, you are doing a new thing in her life. And so God, I just thank you for Hoyan. Thank you for the courage to face distractions. I thank you, Lord, that um, no voice of the enemy will intimidate her in this season, that she would move forward um, with all of the strength that you've given her, with the conviction that she heard you when you instructed her to go and that she's going to go with the strength that she has and with the authority given to her by Jesus Christ. And so, Lord, we just seal her in the precious blood of the lamb. We seal her, we seal her, we seal her. And Lord, we just thank you that your blood is on the doorpost of her life, that the enemy has no legal right to enter. If there's any place where the enemy is having uh, access to her, we just pray that you would reveal it to her so that she can revoke access. Um, Hoy, and I feel like you might have to um, seek the Lord to see if there's anything that you need to renounce or lay down, um, any place where you have to restrict um, access of the enemy in your life. And so sometimes there, there are doors where... Um, okay. Almost seem like if you're in a meadow and there's grass everywhere, but if you keep walking on a certain path, the, the grass gets like smoothed down. So it's kind of like a pathway. There's some places like that where it's like, oh, there's a pathway being walked through because it's like a familiar path that is, is happening. So sometimes the enemy can carve out a familiar path. I'm not saying this is your case, but like a familiar pattern of sin, right? Where it's like um, temptation will happen and then you kind of get caught in a rut and it's happening to you over and over again. Sometimes the Lord would lead us to just say, no, we have to renounce that and say, no more. The enemy can't access my life in that way. So I would just um, step out of prayer for a second and say, Lord, I pray that you would just um, reveal to Hoy and if there are any areas that the enemy is making a pathway into her life, a pathway that he's trying to tempt her, a familiar place of uh, stumbling that you can reveal to her. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Um, fashion loves finance. Pray for strength, feeling discouraged and sad. Oh. Okay. It is weird. I felt the heaviness as I read that. Um, Lord, I thank you, Father, that you give your daughter a, a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. And Lord, I just pray in this season of her life, that God, that you would just, um, you would sit with her, that you would sit with her in the heaviness. I think sometimes um, we can try to push past the discouragement and the sadness and just, you know, try to wave it off and feel like it's not something to bring to you. But Lord, we come to your throne and we just bring all this that she feels, all of the discouragement, all of the sadness, and we lay it at your feet. Um, Lord, I thank you that Jesus is no stranger to the suffering of man, that that he has felt sorrow, he's felt um, discouragement. I'm sure all of those things. And so, Lord, I just thank you. I thank you, Father, for what you're doing in her life, that you are just restoring her back to a place of joy. And even if it's a gradual process, it's a joy that's apart from the circumstances that she's going through. And so, Lord, I just pray that you would just release a peace that surpasses all understanding. And I pray that you would kindle a hope on the inside of her. I almost see it like um, when you want to build a fire, you need the, the, the flint that makes something light and you start to like, you have to blow, blow the embers of the fire before the fire starts to erupt. And so Lord, I pray that you would show her what is that ember that she needs to blow on? What is that one small spark that she needs to um, sit with you in, in order to have the fire come back alive on the inside of her. And so Lord, I pray for strength for her, but I pray that Lord, she would trust you to explore that with you, to start asking you questions 
um, to say, Lord, when was the last time that I felt hope? When was the first last time that I felt um, peace? And so sometimes we're, we're chasing this feeling of like, oh, I remember when I felt so alive and we, I felt so da da da. We want to have that mountain peak type of experience. But Lord, you want us to have this steadiness with you. And so Lord, I just pray that you would bring a steadiness, a stability back to her life. Whatever has robbed her of her joy and of her peace and her hope in this season, I pray that you restore back to her everything that the enemy stole. Every opportunity that she thought passed her by, every place where she thought she was overlooked, every place, Lord, where people didn't get the vision that was on the inside of her. I pray that God, you'd challenge her to begin again, that you challenge her to trust you once again, to bring her requests and make them known to you. And so, Lord, um, I, I sense that what you're doing is a perspective shift, but you want her to come and sit with you and talk to you about the things. And so, Lord, I just release, I would say like release tears release an authentic vulnerability before you that she would open up to you and just tell you exactly how she feels um i feel led to say like it's not um it's not you disrespecting god by saying god why is this happening it's not you being ungrateful it's not you being a brat it's you talking to your father and really being real with him because there's some things that the lord wants to tell you but he wants you to be real with him about how you actually feel. And so God, I just thank you for this um, this transparency that is even gonna shift the way that she prays, the way that she talks to you. Uh, I sense that there's a person in your life that you're talking to in the way that you ought to be talking to Jesus. That you're, it's almost like you're venting to this person. You're like, I don't understand why this and this and this. That person gets the full brunt of your emotions but you're not giving that emotion to Jesus. And Jesus is like, talk to me. Holy Spirit is like, just talk to me. And so Lord, I pray that she would make that shift, that that shift of uh, her confessions would come straight to you. That whoever that middle person is, as well-intentioned as they are, I pray that you would help her to be able to just talk directly to you without the need of an intermediary. I feel like this person is a prayer warrior in your life that, um, joins with you in prayer and they're they're an amazing person to have but the lord wants you to pray specifically to him ty says he wants to be your father yes exactly yes jesus uh jesus is our our brother we're co-heirs with christ the lord doesn't have any stepchildren so yes ty says be that daughter that runs to their father yes the lord is trying to change your instinct that when you cry you cry first to him that when you run when something hurts you you tell him first Oh, I'm speaking to myself because I, I definitely have a praying mother that sometimes I kind of try to reroute to her first. But for all of us, the Lord wants that to be our first response. Take it to the Lord. And so, Lord, um, I just thank you for the strength. I thank you for the renewed relationship, the, the renewed view of who you are, the permission. Yeah, I feel like the Lord wants to give you permission to just be undone in front of him. You know, I feel like sometimes we feel like we have to like, dear Heavenly Father, he's like, no. I want you to come. Lord, it's ghetto out here. I hate it here. I hate it here. All of this is awful. And he wants you to just say it. All of the dressing up, don't do it to the Lord. In this season of your life, you need that unfiltered thing with the Lord. And the Lord can handle it. And you can handle it. He's not going to... Um, he's not going to punish you for being honest with him. And so, Lord, I just thank you. I release the uh, the spirit of adoption by which we call you Abba Father. Woo. The spirit of adoption by which we call you Abba Father. I release it to her now that she would step into sonship, daughtership with you, that she would understand that all of the things, all of the comfort of the Holy Spirit, all of those things are uh, given to her as a daughter, that she is able to just speak to her father, that she's able to have assistance and comfort from the Holy Spirit, that she's able to get guidance from the example of Jesus, that she gets to hear the voice of the Lord and she gets that guidance that is there from you specifically. She can get it directly from the source and she doesn't have to go through a middle person. She doesn't have to have someone pray for her. She can pray to you and your word says you hear us when we pray. So Lord, we just thank you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I got discombobulated for a second. I almost ended this live by mistake. <laughs> Praise God. Okay, very last prayer. Lord, uh, thank you so much, Lord. You're so good. And thank you all for rocking with me because I feel like I've been here for a minute. Let's see. Um, 
Ooh, an hour, 40 minutes. Okay, last prayer. Marina Baldwin Art says, prayers for wisdom and guidance in relationships and a project I'm trying to get out to producers. I love it. I love a kingdom creative. Um, hmm. Lord, I just thank you for Marina. I thank you for her boldness in this season, her willingness to be set apart for you, her willingness to be a pioneer. And Lord, even in the tension of her relationships changing, I sense that it's almost like she's not speaking the same language as her friends and family anymore. That all of a sudden, they used to understand. Like, there's so many people who probably, are, what is it that you do again? Like, I don't really get it. And suddenly, it's like she's not speaking English. Like, she's, she's saying things about her project and about her work that people don't quite get. They don't understand it. Not only don't they get it, they might even be speaking against what she's doing and, and not seeing it as, like, a viable um thing to be working on. And so Lord, I just pray, I pray right now that you yourself would confirm to her that uh, she's right where you need her to be. There's some people who do projects that are years ahead of what people are doing. And so sometimes it takes people some time to adjust to the idea that you're putting forth. And uh, Lord, so I just pray for Marina right now. I just pray that you'd help her to continue to be the visionary that you've called her to be. I pray that, Lord, that she would not be so concerned about people who don't get the trajectory of her life and the people who don't get the caliber of her projects. Um, and so, Lord, I just pray that you would cover her, cover her mind in this season, that she would be, uh, that the voice of the accuser, the voice of mockers, would not even seep into her. I pray that there would be no, some of what she's hearing is people's projection, right? Because people have had great ideas that they never did anything with, but they see someone running with an idea and they're like, well, surely she's gonna fail like I failed or she's not gonna really do it because I'm scared. So I'm gonna assume that she's afraid. And so this, this conviction, it's almost like I can't not do it. This thing comes from you. It's a fire that you put on the inside of her. And so, Lord, I just thank you. I pray that you bless her in this season. I pray that every project that she does, as you give her utterance, as you give her inspiration, I pray that you bless every project that she puts her hand to. And God, I just pray that you would um, highlight her project to the right people, that the right sponsors would see it, the right partners would see it, the right producers would see it. And I pray only for producers that would have a heart for her art, a heart for her art. There will be people who there will be people who see her skill set and want to convince her to use it for something else. I don't know if you're an illustrator or what you do, but there will be people who will say, oh, you do this really well. How about you do this project for me? But those are not the people to partner with. You want people who have a heart for your art, who specifically see what you do and they can see what you're trying to make. And so, Lord, I just pray for this particular project. We just protect it because if it came from you, you're going to help her bring it into fruition. And so, Lord, I just pray for wisdom and guidance. Even beyond what she studied, I pray that her instincts would kick in, that like you've been telling me, Lord, that we should be as shrewd as vipers and as harmless, innocent as doves. And so, Lord, I pray that her discernment would kick up, that she wouldn't just share her art with anyone. Like, I come against any people who like to steal art and... um claim it as their own. I don't know what you call plagiarism for art, but I come against that attack of the enemy. Any place where the enemy has done that in the past has like literally stolen her art and attributed it to somebody else. I come against that in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for restoration right now, restoration of her funds, restoration of even like the inspiration to draw. Like there might've been a, a concern, a fear of like, well, what if someone steals my art again? What if someone mimics my style and tries to do what I, I, I'm trying to do? There is like, the Lord is like cocooning this idea, but he's also asking you to be a little bit more discreet. Like don't give anyone the opportunity to uh, 
to not only steal your art, but don't give them an opportunity to speak against your art. You have to protect it like a baby. Um, and so, Lord, I just pray that anyone who has put their lips on this project, we just cancel every word curse. We cancel every assignment of the enemy to uh, destroy her destiny when it comes to her art. And so, Lord, I just release her into the fullness of all that you have for her. I thank you for this kingdom creative that you're raising up for such a time as this. I thank you for your signature on her art, that people will see her art and they will see you through her art. I pray that you would inspire her. Holy Spirit, we just breathe your anointing over her art right now, even over her, that she would create with a greater level of revelation that even if it seems like, oh, this isn't a spiritual space, but Lord, I pray that she would be inspired by your Holy Spirit to create new things for you, that the way that she approaches her art would be as you inspire, as you lead her. And so God, I just, um, I just thank you for the fact that she is going to be willing to create with you in this season, that she's not going to lean on her own understanding, but she would acknowledge you in all of her ways and all of her pen strokes and all of the things that she designs and puts together, all of the ideas that she has. She would acknowledge you and attribute you um, for the success that she has in the future. So Lord, we just thank you. We cover her, we cover her art, we cover her mind, we cover her ears, and we uh, we erase every trauma attached to a uh, rejection rejection of her rejection of her gifts and lord i just pray that she would have a renewed view of who she is um that lord you showed me that we are most like our creator when we are creating and so lord i just pray that she would see that it's you operating in her as she makes art and that let that be the thing that gives her courage gives her more gusto uh to know that the creator of the universe is creating through her and so lord we just bless her we bless her art and all the things that she puts her hand to in the mighty name of jesus amen 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 okay dear friends that is the last prayer request. And I want to say thank you so much for rocking with me tonight. We prayed through 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Like 13 prayer requests. And so I'm super grateful for the Lord. I know um, I was meant to... Be, I Someone asked earlier, do I do this often? Yes. I try to do it on a weekly basis, um, a weeknight. Um, it's typically been... 7 30 p.m central time on thursdays this week um my church rig nation in houston texas is having a really powerful conference and so i wanted to be able to fully attend and not have to step away but i wanted to honor my assignment to come do live prophetic prayer and i wanted to pray with you all i've missed you all um and so here we are so thank you all for tuning in yes the live will be saved you'll see it in just a few minutes um that is posted marina you're most welcome god bless you god bless your art god bless your hands god bless your mind all the things okay all right my friends you can watch the replay and um share if you feel so led okay bye good night thank you for watching